Hi, my name is Ninja Tyberg, and I'm the writer and director of the film Pleasure, which is streaming exclusively on Mubi now. Yeah. I've actually been working on the subject my whole adult life. Uh, so it started when I was 16, and my boyfriend at the time showed me a porn film. And um, it made me very... Uh, I was very shocked because uh, it was so, like, I had no idea that uh, porn would be so brutal. I had a very naive and romantic idea about sex and porn. I thought it would be more like an underwear commercial or something. Um, and, um, so, yeah, so I was shocked for two reasons. First, like, I, uh, I realized the huge difference between, like, our different expectations of sex and how he was raised as a boy and me as a girl. Um, because it was obvious he and his friends, they all watched porn. They shared these like VHS cassettes because uh, this was in like year 2000 or something. Um, and um, yeah, so like our very, very different how we were, were raised and also our very different expectations of sex. Um, but uh, and the second reason like why I got so upset was because of the content. It felt very degrading towards the women uh, because they were just there to be like sex dolls basically, and it was very much from a male point of view. I want you to be sexy for the viewer at home. Uh, the guys at home want to get to know you. I want you to look at the camera always. Don't look at me. Look at the camera because you're looking at the guy at home. Okay. About 10 seconds, we're gonna start rolling, so. Picture's up, are you ready? Yep. So I became an um, anti-porn activist, uh, um, and for a few years I was part of that movement, and I wanted to erase all porn, or get rid of all porn, stop porn. Um, but after, yeah, like, I got older, and also, like, queer feminism became bigger and I started to like change my views on things and I realized that porn was not the problem uh, in itself like people having sex on camera or watching people having sex on camera was not the problem so it wasn't porn that I was against but these like very uh, extreme gender roles or stereoty stereotypical gender roles uh, so I decided that uh, instead I wanted to like uh, be part of like a feminist porn movement. So that was actually the reason why I started my first film school to do feminist porn. If you stretch after you get out of it, then it'll really help you not feel sore. Okay. Like, like tomorrow. Yeah. It's not like a painful sore, it's like you went to the gym sore. Uh, do you remember your safe words as we talked about them before? Yes, red is stop. Red is stop completely. If there's a gag in your mouth, you go uh, uh, uh. I had to observe a lot of porn because I've been part of the porn debate for so many years and following like all these different uh, perspectives and angles and arguments and I wanted to find a way to like measure something and get like statistics. Um, and when watching all these porn, I, I became really, really curious about like understanding the people who made it and uh, how, what, how they viewed their job and also like the dynamics between the people on set, like the men and women, what do they do before take and after. And so um, I decided to make a short, short film, uh, which I did. And uh, it premiered in Cannes in 2013, and it won a prize, and it got really successful. Uh, and I kept saying in interviews that I wanted to portray the real people behind the porn stereotypes. I started with uh, just like meeting a few people and doing interviews, um, but I asked them if there was a chance like for them to introduce me to someone else or uh, if I could go to some uh, event or something. And slowly, like every time I met someone, they introduced me to a new person. And after a while, I got to go to um, like uh, shootings and then I was invited to parties and slowly like that just uh, uh, the world opened up to me and it wasn't as hard as I thought. Um, it was probably easier because I was a woman, uh, so no one thought that I was there for like a creepy reason. She's a, a director, great director for Kink. Hi, and, uh, I'm Bella. Very, very Hi, brand everyone. new. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. So everything is, is based on, on my experiences, but it's important to say that like we shot the film in 2018 and I did my research between 2014 and 2018, 19, something like that. And uh, the industry has actually changed a lot since then uh, because of OnlyFans and especially the pandemic have made uh, 
much more porn not being shot, uh, you know, in people's homes or do their own content, which have improved the working conditions a lot because it has given the performers much more power. But to me, the film is not only a film about the porn industry. Um, like after a while of, of going into that world, I started to feel that I wasn't as interested in like just pointing at the industry, but rather showing power structures that are very uh, present everywhere. So in a way, I'm like using the industry as a backdrop uh, or an allegory to say something about, you know, what it's like being a woman in a male dominated world or like capitalism. So yeah, you can also really see it from as more of a metaphor. Like an early inspiration was uh, Hildegard von Bingen, who is uh, just as a fun idea, because she's like the first female composer in history, and she was a Swedish nun. And so we had this idea of having like a slut shaming choir. So that's how that whole like religious thing started, because I wanted to work with like the Hora Madonna complex, uh, and also like using these ideas about like female sexuality, yes or the, you, using the woman as the sublime, or you know, the idea of womanhood, like the vir Virgin Mary, but also that, you know, the, um, uh, it's really like heaven and hell in a way, how it's been used um, by men historically. Um, and um, so, um, yeah, so that's, uh, and, and I wanted to also use like moaning or different like way where, because the moaning and opera, for example, who can be seen as like the finest like musical art form in a way, uh, can be very similar to like sexual moaning. So I wanted to play with that as well. And um, then also have the contrast of like the rap with the Mape, who is a brilliant um, uh, Swedish rapper. Uh, and I love her voice. She has such a like strong, um, powerful voice. So play with different ty like versions of uh, the female voice and different connotations and I think we we experimented a lot with like trying different sounds on different scenes and it was just like sometimes I just worked with my gut feeling of like when does it work and when does it add more layers because I wanted to like really challenge the audience to like think and reflect I knew from the beginning that I wanted like the female friendship to really play an important part. Uh, and for me, the relationship between Bella and Joy is the heart of the film, or like that's the love story for, in a way for me. Um, and uh, I guess for di many different reasons, I, first of all, I think um, the way, th like the only way to really um, like, deal with patriarchy or um, be a bit like to create some kind of freedom uh, is in like through camaraderie with other women because it's when 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 you are with other women you're not a woman you're just human um, and um, also it's so important to create this like female networks and that that we can obviously see with me too that how important that is because that's what patriarchy is is it's a network a male network where men has set the norm and uh create the, the, the created the world uh on based on like their needs and wants and desires i mean i'm not really used to um hanging out with girls you gotta stay away from them girls. They're like... Like, I know what you mean. It's all drama and like talking shit behind your back. Joy is really the reason, in a way, for me to do the film. Because Bella, um, she comes from a much more privileged background. And she, she can do this as some type of like identity project. Like, she doesn't need to and she's already privileged and she can um, she can. She only wants to do it if she can be like successful and uh, be at the top. Um, 
Joy comes from a totally different background, uh, and um, she's the one, like she is more representing actually the majority of women uh, doing sex work where you don't have that many options usually and um, also it's harder like if you're further down in the hierarchy it's even harder to stand up and uh, to be listened to so um, yeah I wanted to really like also show th that difference between those two women and um, um, like because to me the film is also like a like a deconstruction of the American dream where this idea about like if you just work hard enough you can get all the way to the top but there's only room for a very few in the top of the pyramid and to get there you have to climb on others and also like all st statistics statistics show that it's not the people who's like that starts in the bottom that gets to the top. It's like just reproducing itself. Like the more privileged you are, the more privileged you're gonna be. We, we should all just like start our own company, find like a rich investor or a sugar daddy and just, you know, all girls get really fat and ugly. And then if guys wanna work, they have to eat our pussies under our fat flap. <laughs> The definition of porn uh, to me is that it's something with um, that just have the, like the intention of making you horny or like usually to like masturbate to. Um, so um, I would say that's the only distinction in that way that it's like made with like a very specific purpose. Other than that, I mean. Mm, yeah, I think both are films. It's just uh, porn is, is is one type of specific film, uh, but it's also it's a genre, genre film in a way. You know, you can compare it a little bit with like horror film. You're supposed to be scared. Uh, with the comedy, you're supposed to laugh. Um, so um, um, yeah, it's just like one genre of films. I think it's very unfortunate that we have this um, stigma around sexuality and uh, especially like that explicit sex can't be seen anywhere else than in porn uh, because it's um, it's a very natural part of life it's actually the source of life and uh, that's we like that's what art is art uh, and storytelling is about us communicating about our experiences and we need to do that we do that with everything else in life we have very strong need of like process to process our uh, experiences collectively uh, and to share and to learn through others stories and we don't get to do that with sex uh, it's like um, taboo it's hidden in the dark and that's it creates this like uh, obsession about it and that's I think why like commercials and everyone why, why like teasing with sex is always working because it's triggering us not showing but teasing um, and I think that's because we have this need to watch it or like to uh, watch it publicly and experience it visually as we do with everything else and um, um, I think it like it would be much more healthy if it could have a natural part and be in a natural ingredients in in films, in storytelling, in art. Um, and I think people wouldn't watch as much porn if if it was. Um, and because also porn today is, like that's the sexual education for most people and affects all of us. What really drew you out here? I'm here to be the next big porn star.